Ricky Starks is one of my favorite people to watch on AEW Dynamite each week because there's the charisma there. There's clearly the work ethic there. Ricky Starks is just great. But when I think about Ricky Starks, I don't know much about Ricky Starks. Is that kind of by design that you're one of the few people that has mystique in wrestling these days? Um, I guess. I really don't know. See, the thing is, is, is I'm a pretty private person. Um, so I, I don't always care to share a bunch of stuff uh, online um, or even like film stuff. You know what I'm saying? So there is that aspect of it, too. But sometimes people just don't ask me. So if you don't ask, I won't tell. By that, I mean that you're branded so well that you could see something and go, Ricky Starks would do that. Ricky Starks wouldn't do that. But then uh. like, how do you describe who Ricky Starks is or what he is besides that's a charismatic, energetic guy. Like, if I hear a song, I think I could go, Ricky Starks would like that, or Ricky Starks yeah. wouldn't like that. So, right. so is that that's by design? That Dude, that's a great question. I don't think it's by design. I think that's just how I am. I, I, obviously, I like hearing that. Like, that's, that's great because everyone seems to be – I think everyone seems to take the easy way. I don't want to be too relatable to people to try to win over their um, their fanfare. And me personally, I don't care to do that. If there's something that you can relate to me about, then that's cool. But I'm not about to, you know, go online and, and try to do all this other stuff. The, the thing with me is that I think too many people try to make me a character and try to describe me as something. And I don't, I never saw myself as that. What you see is is what you get. Like this is, who I am outside of wrestling and people right. have a hard time to believe that. I don't know why, but yeah, it, this is, this is, I like the fact that you, you see things and you think of me. I love that because that tells me that uh, I'm doing something right. Whether that's by design or not, I think it all has worked out perfectly. Well, there's an old story about Tommy dreamer who's been in and out of AEW where he had an argument with an unnamed ECW executive who said that Tommy Dreamer would never drive that kind of car. Uh, that they had some kind of a thing where I think Tommy Dreamer showed up in a Mercedes and he said, Tommy Dreamer would never drive that. That's not possible. And yeah. like Ricky Starks, for example, would not drive a minivan. Uh, he wouldn't have Trent's mom's minivan. Uh, right. The video that plays as you come to the ring shows a Ferrari or a Porsche or something like that. That's a Ricky Starks car. Yes. That's a great point, actually. I think, uh, yeah, dude, man, you've really made me think about something I didn't think of before. I, I guess there is some type of branding when it comes to how I look and how I present myself. And I'm all for that. You're absolutely right. There's certain things that you wouldn't see me do. Uh, I don't even own a minivan. And I wouldn't even, I don't even like driving the rentals. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. I agree with that 1000%. Uh, I think for me though, is I am just, just keep this in mind for me, it's very important to be as authentic and genuine as possible because I don't think that we get that a lot of the times in wrestling. Right. And so, uh, obviously I know that I'm going to have people who will say, Oh, I don't get it. I don't get Ricky stars. I don't know what he is. And what I say to that is maybe there isn't just, it, maybe it isn't supposed to be something that you get. Why can't it just be someone who, who is who he is? And he acts the way he does because that's, I'm from New Orleans. Like everyone acts like that. So it's normal to me. That makes a lot of sense. The last time I had the pleasure of interviewing you, vinyl and music came up. Have you always been a vinyl collector? Not always. I think I got into it when I was like 28, 27, so a few years ago. Uh, a fan gifted me a turntable, and they gave me the uh, the Lionel Richie vinyl. That was my first vinyl. Can't slow and then for down. me, huh? Can't slow down by Lionel Richie. I is that the one where he's like posed? Yeah, <laughs> I have it actually. I I have it. Uh, that's the, my first one. Dancing on the ceilings on there, I believe. And so, uh, so from there it started, honestly, dude, I just got a new vinyl not too long ago or really like one of my favorites, um, Grover Washington Jr. Oh, yeah. I just got, yeah. So I'm loving it. Uh, I'm, I'm slowly adding it. Keep in mind, I don't get all vinyl. Like there's certain things that 
I want to hear in that, that way. Yeah. So I'll go in and find that. Otherwise I'll just have Spotify and then just listen to it on there. But God, the Grover Washington Jr. album is so great to hear. Just the scratches, just oh, all of it is so good. Absolutely. And if you like Grover Washington Jr., you like Lionel Richie, that means you like Yacht Rock. I do. I love Yacht Rock. Uh, I don't know if you remember the series that used to come on YouTube where they would go through different episodes about certain artists. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Channel yeah. 101 thing with – with with has like a, a fake David Lee Roth yelling at the Doobie Brothers or something. Well, yeah, there's like an episode of how the Doobie Brothers song came about. You remember those? That's those those oh, yeah. guys would do like parodies of it. Yeah, I used to watch those all the time. Uh, but dude, I love Yacht Rock, and honestly, I think it's Yacht Rock, and I love soft rock. Uh, I just love that whole time period. But your in ring entrance song is still pretty damn on brand. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you would call that genre-wise. Like, is it hard rock soul? What would you call uh, it? There, so, Curtis hard Mayfield. R&D. Yeah, what would you consider Curtis Mayfield to be? Well, soul, you got to say he's a soul artist, but he did have some rock tendencies. That Superfly soundtrack, Pusher Man right. and all that. that. That's some rock right there. Freddie's Dead and all that. Exactly. So that's really where that theme song is kind of based off of those, those horns and everything. Uh, it's very like stadium status sound. Um, so I would consider that a little bit funk rock, you know what I'm saying? A little funk rock. There's, there's elements of like some Ohio players in it. There's oh, yeah. definitely, uh, elements of Curtis in there. Um, you know, stuff like that. Uh, I, I really love DJ Roger. Uh, he's good he passed away, unfortunately, but he's great. So, you know, those different, those different elements. Honestly, hear me out. Isaac Hayes elements are all through that, that theme song. Hmm. And was that theme song, if you're not allowed to say, don't say it or just go next question. Was it done by an in-house AEW composer at the theme song? Yeah, it was done by uh, Ruckus. Ruckus did it. And I didn't hear the song until I actually came out for my match with Cody. So um, wow, I, I love it. And obviously there's room for growth in that theme song too. Like it can, it can make be made for some, some edits there. Hmm. Now you personally, I know that you're an encyclopedia for wrestling and I'm learning that, you know, your stuff with music too. Is there anything else hobby wise that comes close? Like fa- always fashionable. You always change up your gear and all that. Uh, no one wears shoes like you do to the ring. <laughs> My wife's like, <laughs> Did you see Ricky's shoes? Okay, I didn't, but now I do. Is there anything else that comes close to music and wrestling for you? I mean, not, I mean, art. I love art, too. I love certain types of art. But honestly, damn, that's really the main, the main things that I really love and, and I'm bringing forth in wrestling. Um, obviously, fashion, music, wrestling, those are the main three things that I enjoy, obviously. So, yeah, when it comes to those three, I think that's about it. I'm slowly getting hobbies as I'm getting older, which is cool. But I think for right now, I really enjoy those three and and combining them. Hmm. Now, that's cool to hear that you're evolving and you're learning and you're growing and all that. Because now you've been in wrestling like 10 years, 12 years, something like that. Yeah. So 10 years um, coming up in October. So I started in 2011. Oh, no, not 10 years. Wait. Almost, almost 10, 10-ish? Oh, yeah, it's 10-ish years. Yeah, my anniversary comes up in October 14. So, yeah, it's been a very long journey. Uh, and obviously, I've seen things change uh, from the independence up all the way to the top. For sure. So it's really cool to see at least that growth. And being in AEW, being on weekly television and a uh, big way and all that does that really change your life a lot because you you said at the at the top of this that you're a private person yeah is being a celebrity difficult for you or is it just natural because you've always had this charisma to you Mm, I don't find it difficult in the sense of case in point like I remember I made a status about like bringing my playstation to to play over the weekend (laughs) And people are like, yeah, people are like, oh, you're going to stream it? And it's like, you know, you don't have to film everything that happens. Totally. And some guy had responded with, uh, you know, I was, I was complaining and 
you know, I can't handle the, the celebrity status. And it was such a very, uh, it, it, the attitude of it was very, uh, what's the word, you know, entitled. Uh, so it's like, I'm okay with being a celebrity because I have the option to not uh, show certain things that I don't want to and not have to feel some type of uh, ownership. No one has ownership over me. So I don't have to do certain things if I don't want to. But I'm, I'm absolutely fine with it. I don't look at myself as a, a celebrity or anything. I look at myself as someone of importance, you know. <laughs> I say celebrity because if you go at the this precise time and flight path and all that, people will be like, that's that guy from TV. I mean, when you have close to a million people watching you a week in the States, plus the Absolutely. people in Canada and Europe and, and all that. And YouTube, yeah. It's over. Exactly. As far as total views go, we're over a million. Exactly. So bring it all back to AEW a little bit. Uh, working with Taz, is he somebody that you'd met before AEW ever? No, that was actually my first time meeting Taz. Uh, and first time working with Taz. I'd met Cage before uh, on the Indies, and he's great. But that was my really like first time meeting Taz, talking to him. Uh, I remember he came up to me after my first match with Cody and was and giving, you know, just giving me compliments as far as the match goes and mm -hmm. how he was impressed and stuff like that. So I, I think the um, the partnership has been so beneficial to not only me but everyone involved that I, I enjoy it. I think Taz is great. It's a great contrast between your personalities, to, to say the very, very least. And it almost uh, makes me as a fan wonder, will you start influencing Taz? Will he start dressing better? Will he start, I don't know, embracing different things? Is that a possibility that we might eventually see in the storyline? I don't know if you if you if you have Taz uh, come out in some some Gucci slides, but I think you'll catch Taz walking some loafers with no socks and shorts and a nice little polo. You know what I'm saying? I think I think we'll catch Taz with that and a nice cigar in his hand. That's a possibility for sure. That would be a wonderful thing indeed. And you personally, uh, your build is being from New Orleans. You are known to be a resident of Austin. Austin is one of the coolest cities in the U.S. It's the, the yeah. San Francisco of Texas. What brought you out there? Uh, initially, I was out there from uh, just basically my parent. My mom needed a – she's a nurse, so she came out there to find a better opportunity as far as jobs go. And that's kind of where it just started from there. I found the school to train at. Uh, and then it just snowballed from there. And, and it's hard to – there's no other place that besides New Orleans that I would think about living just because I love the weather here. Uh, everything is really cool. Everything is, is hiking, you got greenery. Everything is available to me that I enjoy. So uh, I really do like Austin quite a bit, though I will always rock New Orleans, you know, as long as I live. Right. It seems like Austin might be like the fifth city of wrestling right now uh, without naming too many names. A lot of talent down there, but they didn't necessarily move there because their mothers were changing careers per se. Do you, right. is it, is it that wrestlers are moving there because it's cool or is there actually a big wrestling scene in Austin that we don't know about? Well, I don't, they're I'm trying to think of who else is from Austin. Uh, well, Undertaker, Mark Henry, oh, yeah. I believe lives there. The Miz, talks about being there sammy g oh well sammy actually lives in houston um as far as i know it's right. me taker and mark henry that live here and i think kofi also live here lives here too Miz moved back to california but i think people enjoyed cal or austin just for the fact that one you don't have that state um i think a state income tax or something like that that you have to deal with and two it's just good weather year round so, you know, you, you have those um, with you. And then the views of certain areas are beautiful. I don't think that Austin is necessarily a hotbed for wrestling. There's a few shows that are still current here. But uh, for the most part, I think you'll find that Austin is like a, like a suburb of some of the hotter spots, which would be Houston and Dallas, in my opinion, as far as um, independents go. So there, but don't get me wrong, like Inspire, that's pretty reputable. 
and they're based out of here and, and from here as well. Hmm. Well, two, three quick questions, then you're on your way because you're a busy man. Everybody knows that by now. First, <laughs> yeah. is there a highlight for you so far in being part of the AEW team? Highlight. So it, since I've been there, right? Yeah. Uh, man, that's a great question. I think the highlight for me has been how easily integrated I've, I've gotten myself into the whole system. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of the people backstage, I feel like have taken a liking to me. Uh, I don't feel like I'm some type of outcast. I've gelled in pretty well with the whole roster. So I think that's pretty cool just because uh, a month ago I was virtually unknown to these people. And now I think people have a little bit respect for me as far as what I can do and stuff like that. Absolutely. Uh, Ricky Starks is, as we were talking about this, this charismatic person that has just tremendous upside. I guess I keep complimenting you deal with it. What can you do? But is there anything that you think that people have wrong about you in general that you wish were focusing on instead of the things I've been talking about? Um, not, not really, because I find any type of criticism against me to be funny when it's not valid criticism. You know what I'm saying? So I've heard everything out of the book. People don't like the way I dress. Um, I look too much like some, some other people. Uh, you know, I'm not that good. I can't cut a promo, stuff like that I've heard. And I find it to be funny because <laughs> nope. it's, it's all subjective. It's really all subjective. Yeah. But at the end of the day, uh, I just focus on the people that actually support me, that actually like me, they, they get me. Uh, and that's, that outweighs the negative more than anything. Makes sense to me. So the closer, Ricky, any last words for the kids? Um, you know, I could sit up here and give something very motivational. I don't think I have to because my career is, is pretty motivating as it is. Yeah. But if there's one thing I want to close off with is that everyone should listen to the group Ambrosia at least once in their <laughs> life, at least once. And I promise you, you'll be a fan for life. They are absolutely amazing. I love Ambrosia. Uh, some of the, the, best, the best moments have been filled with them in the background playing. And yeah, just give it a shot. I mean, here's a little fun fact about Ambrosia. The singer David Pack was yeah. the musical director for Bill Clinton's inauguration for U.S. presidency. So if he was Clinton approved, uh, that's pretty cool. I love that. Yeah. I really thought, side note, I really thought you were going to say that Ambrosia had a small part in the rock musical theater uh, War of the Worlds. But because there's certain there's certain people who um, singers, at least, and that that whole thing that sounds just like the lead singer from Ambrosia. You're right. David Pack, I think, is his name. Well, you David just Pack. taught me something new. So Ricky Starks, what can he do? He teaches you. He inspires, et cetera. I can't yeah, thank you enough so for your much. time, man. <laughs> thank you, bro. I appreciate this. Outro cast.